Hi friends, it's Unicorn, and today is International Women's Day, so I have ten brilliant memoirs written by women to recommend. It's actually eleven, but we'll get to it later. And I also want to say that although we're celebrating Women's History in March and thus International Women's Day today, but the work to fight and ensure gender equality and a lot of equalities on other topics does not stop after March. But You guys all know it. It's just something in my mind. <laughs> Going back to memoirs, I love memoirs. I read a lot of them, and these are the ones that stand out over the years, written by women. Although they're from different backgrounds, and all these women has different stories, but they are all brilliantly written, and they're all so empowering. And I feel like I learned so much from reading them. First book I read in early 2019, and I haven't forget about it for even a single day. It's Educated by Tara Westover. Tara Westover grew up in a survivalist family in Idaho, where her parents didn't believe in education, and they're very skeptical about anything that is slightly related to the government. Therefore, schools and hospitals are forbid in their family. So she never went to a hospital growing up, and she never set her feet into a classroom until the age of. Seventeen. Luckily, she started self-educating and ended up going to Reagan Young University to study history. In there, it's the first time she got the structured education, and she devoured all the knowledge that came to her, and that completely changed her life. She ended up earning a doctoral degree in Cambridge. I loved this book so much. I was not only moved by her strength of self-educating and her spirit of learning after she went to university, but I was also Deeply touched by her strength of growing out of her past, out of her traumatized childhood, some of the things that she went through is beyond imagination. But she was able to went through all of that and evolved into the strong woman. And this book is one of the books that I want to reread the most. Another book on this list that is related to education is called Lab Girl by Hope Yaren. Hope Yaren is a scientist who built three laboratories by herself, where she studied plants. And soil. In this memoir, she recounts her story growing up in Minnesota and how she found the love for science. Spoiler alert: she got a lot more support from her family compared to Tara Westover. And more importantly, in this book, she tells us the story of the adventures that she took on in order to study the most rare object in biology after she became a scientist. It's always wonderful to read stories about female scientists. Consider, men takes a lot more credit in science. Even in today's environment, the book balances the experiments that she did and her personal story very well. It's both informative and interesting to read about. I enjoy this book, and I can feel her passion to her work in every chapter. And the adventures that she took on is just so fascinating to read about, and it really shows you how people work in science, at least in her field, and how much effort people put into their works. Next up is a book called Crazy Brave, and this is a memoir of the native. American poet Joy Harjo. This is a raw account of how Harjo's story growing up in an abusive family, and how she and her siblings digest the situation when they were little, and how she was able to. Connect to her culture spiritually and find her love in poetry, music, and art, and eventually to thrive on her own. In this book, the narrative jumps around, and she constantly presents her stream of thoughts and her poems throughout the book, mixed in with her life stories. I haven't read a lot of her poems before I read this book, but I really love the ones that are showing up in this book. It really makes you feel that she put her heart into art already when she's little, and I also really like the amount of Indian culture that I learned from this book. To see someone as so connected with their culture is a fascinating and wonderful experience. The next book here is. Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This is a book where Chanel Miller reclaimed her identity from Emily Doe, who's been sexual assaulted in Stanford, to a brave young artist who's not afraid of telling her stories and facing her trauma. And this book also shows you how hard it is to seek justice in sexual assault cases in the U.S. justice system, even with her case, which is very clear. The physical evidence is. 
immediately secured and she even had two eyewitnesses. I loved everything in this book. I mean, love is probably not the right word here considering what she went through is absolutely heartbreaking, but I really, really love this book. She recounts how the case happened, what she went through that day and the days before, and she led us to the legal procedures step by step. She was able to examine the situation, the event in such a sharp way that really makes us to see the flaws of the justice system, the flaws in our public media, and the huge amount of victim blaming that person needs to went through after sexually assault cases. After reading this book, I just want to hug her. I want to embrace her for her braveness, for her to speak out for all the survivors there are who unfortunately went through similar things. I love the power that she gave us and the resilience she has to keep us pushing and changing the world. Speaking of resilience, I have to recommend Beautiful Country by Qian Juli Wang, who has so much resilience, who I came to admire. And this book is one of my favorite books of last year, and I just can't stop talking about it. This is Qian's memoir about the first few years she immigrated to America with her parents at the age of seven. Qian was told that America is a beautiful country and she can achieve so many more dreams here but instead they went through so many difficulties in this land where they don't even speak the language. This book recounts her story, analyzing the changes her families went through and also the insecurity they had at the time because they were undocumented. It's also about the burden that casted on her, a seven years old girl who needs to adapt to this new way of living and also protect her family. I was deeply moved by her story and I also love the writing of this book so much. Much. I love how she plays around with the languages. I also loved how this book dived deep into the lives of undocumented families and showing us their mentalities and the mental limits they had on them that blocked them from enjoying some rights that they actually have, for example, education. The praising that I'm saying here is only the tip of an iceberg. I have a full review of this book, I'll link down below. I highly, highly recommend this book. I just can't wrap my head around the fact that she wrote the whole book on the subway commuting to work as a lawyer in New York City. That again, Again, just shows me how much resilience she has. And then I have here Becoming by Michelle Obama. I don't think I need to introduce you about who Michelle Obama is, but this is her memoir about her upbringing in South Chicago and all the way up to her career choices and her life in and after the White House. This book actually surprised me by how well written it is. Before I read this book, I didn't know that Michelle is such an excellent writer and she was able to write her stories in such a relatable way to make you see the similarities in her stories and our lives, although that our lives cannot be more different than hers. I loved the story in her childhood and the reflection that she had about those stories. And I also loved how she described her beliefs, the things that she firmly believes in, and that affected also her career choices. And of course, we cannot not talking about her marriage with Barack. I admire how honest she is and didn't shy away from the difficulties they had in their marriage and from some hard choices that they had in their lives, whether it's about politics or family lives. And I really appreciate how she's writing about her career choices are intertwined with uh, Bragg's career choices and how she feel like it's her life is connected and also affected by the path that her husband took. Because it's such a dilemma that a lot a lot of women share that their career choices is not as simple as a lot of men's and they're highly affected by their family and the society. I feel like the fact that she had so many resources but still impacted by those traditional way of thinking or the way of society is really first of all very relatable, second of all really showed you that we're still in a male dominated society and there's still a lot of things that need to be done. And also I learned what the life is about when you are living in the White House. It's something very interesting and uh, good to know, I think.
Next up, I have a book that was translated from Chinese last year, and it's called Winter Pasture by Li Juan, as translated by Jack Hargrave. And the original book is also here, it's called Dong Mu Chang. Li Juan is one of my favorite writers in China, and I'm so happy about the translation of this book. This book records one winter when Li Juan joins the Hassock herders to their winter pasture with their 30 camels and 500 sheep and over 100 cattle and horses. As a hand person who's very inexperienced, Li Juan has to earn the trust of the Kazakh herding family and more importantly earn the trust of herself by learning the herding skills, techniques, and the culture. This book is really eye-opening for me because it's the first-hand account of how the life is like on winter pasture, how the herders migrate based on seasons and uh, weather, and how they work as a team to protect all the animals. I'm really glad that we're learning at the same time with Li Zhen, and on top of that, she's a wonderful writer. Her writing was super vivid and super interesting and always very funny that brings a smile on my face. And then I have Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. This is a book that got a lot of attention when it came out, and in my opinion, it worth every hype. Growing up Korean-American, Michelle Zahner had a difficult time connecting to the Korean side of her culture. But after her mom was diagnosed with terminal cancer and unfortunately passed away, she started to form a new connection with her culture and buried herself in grief. This book is about identity, grief, and making peace with the Korean side of her culture and her mom, and a lot of the process was done through food. This book is very emotional, and when I was reading it, I was moved by how much she grows throughout telling her stories. When she was was at odds with her mom to later on she started to form a connection and also started to process the death of her mom and digest what does that mean to her. I also enjoyed the foodie stories in her life and also I appreciated them because I'm a firm believer that food is not just food, it's also about family and culture. And then I have Hunger by Roxanne Gay. This is the first memoir I read in English I think and I loved it so much. This is Roxanne Gay's memoir about the relationship she had with her body, and she opens up with the traumas happened in her childhood. She's not only telling her story, but also have an analysis of the rape culture in the society, and have a deep conversation with her body image and the concept of self-love and self-care. She also talks about how it is like to be oversized in America, not only the fat phobia that she encountered in nearly daily basis, but also the inconvenience she experienced in this world that is mostly designed for smaller people. She counts the struggles that she needs to go through day by day. Those struggles can be as small as the chairs that she sits on or as important as the medical advices she got from professionals. In her vulnerable but wonderful writing, she opens a whole new world for me and makes me think twice about nearly everything. And I feel really lucky that this is the first memoir that I read in English and brought me into the wonderful world world of memoirs. The last book is actually like two books, and I saved them for the last because they haven't been translated yet. And they're both by one of my favorite writers in China, Fu Zhen. One of them is called 最好金归换酒, and the other one is called 半若不系之州. Both of the titles are from ancient Chinese poetry, so I it's very hard to translate them. But the first one roughly means that I would trade my treasures to have a drink with my dearest friend. And the second the second one translates to, I want to be as free as an untied boat. They are horrible translations done by me, so please don't quote me on that. However, both of them are memoirs that Fu Zhen wrote when she was traveling around the world in her gap year, and this one is about the traveling in Latin America, and this one is mainly about the travels she took in Southeast Asia. I know that the concept of traveling around the world can be easily cliche, but not these books. I loved how immersive they are and how much it is about the culture and the history that Fu Zhen learned on her travels. She took on different adventures, and you can see that she really enjoyed and learned so much about the culture that is different from hers, instead of making the whole trip about herself. And as a writer, Fu Zhen reads a lot, so it's very likely that she already know a little bit about the culture and lifestyles, about the country she went to, so it's very interesting to see how she compares the things that she learned from books to her actual experiences. She's such a good writer, 
writer, I just really loved her traveling stories, and these two books makes me want to travel so badly. I really hope they gotta be translated into English sooner rather than later. And that's all the books for today. And again, Happy International Women's Day! If you want some book recommendations specifically on women's rights, I'll leave some links for videos that I made on the topics in previous years down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and find some books that are interesting for you. And please let me know any of your thoughts towards these books, or do you have any other recommendations about memoirs by women? And thumbs up to this video if you liked it. I wish you happy reading, stay healthy. I'll see you in my next bookish video. Bye.